The information we get from ocean observations informs weather forecasts, climate predictions, fisheries management, and it also tells us how the oceans are changing in time. Over the past 30 years, these observations have become more advanced and precise, and yet we still have more work to do. Let's hear from some of our partners around the world about the importance of our global ocean observing system. We know that um, as a result of, of climate change and our oceans warming, that these hurricanes are intensifying more quickly and understanding um, the heat and circulation of our ocean is really important to our weather forecasts. One of the basic things that need to be considered for the success of the global ocean observing system is a need for literacy programs to all stakeholders about the importance of this observation. Oceanographers obviously know the importance of our oceans, but the fact that more of the public are becoming so much more aware of what the oceans mean to, to our, our globe and our planet. Everyone on Earth, every citizen on Earth needs to care about the ocean because it actually is what makes our planet um, habitable. It's the resource through fishing for food supply, but also the ground for many ecosystem surfaces. Currently, the ocean is our friend. It is slowing down climate change. It's storing and absorbing carbon. It's storing heat, taking it away from the surface. So it's slowing down surface warming. Uh, but that also means we're locking in major long-term changes. So how have we come to know this? The Global Ocean Observing System would not be possible if we didn't come together decades ago. The World Ocean Circulation Experiment and the Tropical Ocean Atmosphere Experiment set the foundations of knowledge and collaboration across the global community. Much of the technology was tested and it was driving uh, uh, observations from space, shipborne work, uh, mooring technology and so on. It was the first time really that our community in physical oceanography got together to do a global survey that was internationally coordinated. Which enabled the Global Ocean Observing System to be spawned. NOAA labs like PMEL and AOML uh, and their uh, scientists and engineers are, their fingerprints are all over the uh, ocean observing system and we count on uh, their uh, work and energy to keep it going forward. NOAA and MOES collaboration has not only contributed in situ observing system in the Indian Ocean but also facilitated to transform from statistical forecast to dynamical forecast of monsoon. Over the years, global ocean observations have led to more accurate and timely forecasts of our oceans, weather and climate. They're also telling us about the remarkable changes in the ocean environment for which we need to prepare. With so much ocean information, it can be easy to forget that behind every data point is a person. When we talk about the global ocean observing enterprise, we mean the people behind the observations. And to really capture the rapid changes in the ocean, we need to include more people in this enterprise. Because we need to measure the ocean everywhere in the world, uh, we have to do this through partnerships between nations. No nation alone can really monitor what's happening in the global ocean. I would really like to see the unbiased sharing of an unrestricted sharing of data, knowledge, capacity, technology, methodologies and infrastructure as well as enhanced communication and collaboration between countries. We want people coming from diverse backgrounds asking different questions based on um, their experience, their interests. It's an amazing human enterprise that we're embarking upon. We focus a lot on the technology, but the Ocean Observing System is really about all these people. I get to work with people from different backgrounds around the world. It's the variety and the ideas and energy generating from these interactions which keeps me motivated. You can make sort of friends and colleagues all over the world just because you're all studying ocean science. It's a field where you're going to be getting to ask important questions which impact people across the world um, with new technologies that are coming online. There's a new generation of satellite altimeters uh, coming online so that we'll be able to uh, have an even finer resolution observation of the ocean and it comes along with ocean color from space and other things that are 
are continuing to develop. The progress that we're doing in making information more digital allows us to maybe think about can we develop a digital twin of the ocean, a virtual representation of the physical ocean that will allow us to ask questions like what if, what would happen if we actually sustainably manage our fisheries? What would happen if you protect 30% of the ocean to the biodiversity? What will happen in during climate change and what would happen during certain interventions? Over the past 30 years, the Global Ocean Observing System has made significant strides. We can now predict weather and climate with greater accuracy, saving more lives and property. But we also know that the ocean is warming steadily, storing more carbon. These changes are already impacting those living near our coast, life in the sea, and will soon become even more evident. As you've heard from our partners, we are coming up on new challenges. We need a stronger and more inclusive global community to work together to meet the growing needs of people who rely on the ocean. Thank you to all who contribute to the Global Ocean Observing Enterprise. We look forward to collaborating with you in the future, sharing data and information, and working to improve the system to benefit us all.